Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now remember, if anyone wants an invite to Clubhouse, I have been given a few more invites, so... If you're interested in signing up, let me know. Maybe you can help an aging podcast to make sense of it all. And we can hang out with all the cool kids together. But seriously, if you're already on the platform too, my username on there is at Neil C. Hughes. No surprises there, I know. But on with today's show. And today's guest is Dan McGaw. And he is an award-winning entrepreneur and speaker. And he's also the founder and CEO of McGaw.io, which is an analytics and marketing technology consultancy. And he was also also coined as one of the original growth hackers. And he has led teams at kissmetrics.com, codeschool.com, utm.io, and many more. So I invited him on the podcast today to take a deep dive into the world of MarTech and try and learn more about how businesses of any size can leverage Amazon-like automation and personalization strategies, but without having the luxury of an Amazon-like budget. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Orlando, Florida, so we can speak with Dan McGough. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Dan. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Dan McGaw. I'm the CEO founder of uh, multiple companies, which is quite fun. I own a company called McGaw.io, which is a marketing analytics and marketing te- technology uh, consulting company. And we help companies build world-class marketing tech stacks. And then I'm also CEO of another company called UTM.io, which is a software company that helps people build the best campaign reporting by having good practices with uh, their UT- UTMs and campaign tracking links. So I've uh, been at marketing for a super long time. Um, so that's just a little bit about me and what I do today. Now, you are very modest there because you are the founder and CEO of Magor.io, an analytics and marketing tech consultancy, but you're also an award-winning entrepreneur and you're also known as one of the original growth hackers after leading teams at Kissmetrics, Code School, and so many others. But I've got to ask, what was it that put you on this path? I mean, can you remember where your love of technology came from? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, So I got started with technology when I was about four years old. Uh, My mom went to college for computer science and um, she got a a brand new IBM computer. And you had to learn uh, to use the computer back in what that was like, 88. You had to learn MS-DOS. And I just wanted to play the games. Um, And, you know, I fell in love with that computer because I was able to play this game called Popcorn. It was some French game. It was kind of like their version of Tetris. and I just remember sitting in front of the computer and playing games all the time. So, I mean, I've been on a computer since I was a little kid. Um, I don't even know how to use home row typing because I learned how to type so early that I'm just super fast without using home row typing. So, but uh, that's kind of where it all started. Love that. And from there, of course, you went on to write a book about the marketing tech stack. So can you tell me more about the story behind that book as well? Yeah. Uh, so I wrote the book called Build Cool Shit. So uh, if anybody wants to get a, a free copy of it, you can go to magal.io uh, and we'll, we'll ship one to you. You just got to pay shipping. Um, I saw this, this problem where companies didn't know how to build a marketing tech stack. And to how do you, you can choose a CRM, you can choose a marketing automation platform, but uh, how do you connect that and your analytics and all of these other tools together to create these world-class experiences? I mean, the things I do for big brands can be done for a small business. So I, I started on this mission to figure out how do I write content to do that. I started doing some webinar series and stuff. And um, all that led to me writing a, a short book. I mean, it, it's even got colored pictures in it to help people out. Um, but it really does uh, help you in a short period of time understand like how do you build a marketing tech stack in the modern way and how do you integrate tools together? Um, yeah, and it's been out for about a year and a half. Uh, it's done extremely well for us. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's a short read. So, I mean, I, I love books that take uh, that are 400 pages and have all this stuff in it. But it's 125 pages, super easy to read in an afternoon. Um, but it's a lot of fun to read. 
Love that. And you have been on, been on an incredible journey now, and you've seen this from the very beginning since writing DOS commands on your IBM computer. <laughs> so, I mean, but here we are now. I mean, looking at the MarTech stack in 2021, where is it you think today's marketers are ultimately going wrong? Yeah. So there, there's kind of two main places where marketers, uh, one, they just lack the exposure to the technology side of it. So they really don't um, understand the technical bits that they need to, to correctly integrate these tools together. Um, and a lot of the focus has been shifted from needing an engineer to build out your marketing tech stack and get this stuff going to basically having this concept of what's known as a citizen coder, which is a marketer who can ultimately connect tools together through products like Zapier or Workato or Tray. Um, and no longer do you need an engineer to like get access to really, really good data to send to another tool. Um, and I think that technical aspect is kind of where um, some people are kind of like, little bit behind. They're they're too scared of it. They're intimidated by it. But really if you if you spend a little bit of time and you get a little bit more familiar with technology, um, you can go a long way and also make a lot of money. Um, marketing operations people and people in my field who do marketing tech, they're paid usually 25 to 50 percent more than an average marketer because they can actually connect the tools together. Um, and I think that's the that leads me to the second part is people just lack integration in their stack. Um, if you know somebody's name is John Doe in Salesforce, you need to know that in all of your other tools as well, it shouldn't just be siloed. And that integration part uh, is extremely critical. And I think if marketers got more technical, they'd be much better at integrating the tools. If marketers knew that they integrated their tools, they would have more value creation and revenue, ROI, whatever. Um, they do a lot better. And before you came on the podcast today, I was doing a little bit of research on you guys, and I quickly came across a great piece about debunking multi-touch attribution. Is that something you can expand on for anybody that's not seen that information listening to our conversation today? Yeah, I mean, multi-touch attribution is is like the holy grail. Everybody thinks I'm going to get multi-touch attribution and it's going to tell me everything. Um, and really, multi-touch attribution is extremely dense in the first place, um, and it can be really, really hard to do. And the whole point of it is to really drive return on ad spend, ROAS, right? Um, and a lot of companies think that they're going to get this new data from a multi-touch attribution and they're going to automatically know what to do with it. But most companies, once they get multi-touch attribution, they go, well, what now? What am I supposed to do? Um, and that's really the hardest part. And I think companies just don't know that. Uh, and that's definitely an area where companies need to kind of focus on that. But the key debunking is that um, companies think that this new data for multi-touch attribution is going to be this clean, pristine thing that's going to be really easy to use. But basically, there's two problems with multi-touch attribution. One, if your data sucks and you don't have clean data, it's not going to work. And then two, even if you do have good data, the way that multi-touch attribution works is it can only be used for actually optimizing your spend. It should not be used for reporting. It should be not used for historical reporting. It should not be used to like all these grandiose things. I mean, it should be used by your paid media specialist, your director of performance marketing to optimize their campaigns. And that's really all it should be used for. Um, and I think a lot of companies think it's going to be this holy grail. And, you know, first touch and last touch attribution are typically more directional and are going to be more helpful unless you're spending millions of dollars like than trying to do the whole thing after multi-touch attribution. Most companies just don't get the value from it. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, people need to really focus on where they're going to get success. And of course, a big trend at the moment is many businesses are trying to put their smorgasbord of data into artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to unlock those valuable hidden um, uh, insights there. But like you said, clean data is so important. And I often hear the phrase garbage in, garbage out. So the question has to be, can you really trust that data? And that's with machine learning. I mean, once yeah. you have bad data, it's bad outcomes. Yeah. So you really have to make sure that your data is clean. And, and in most companies, they don't have the rigor or the experience or the knowledge to know how to correctly build as what we would call taxonomy or schema to save the data successfully, right? So um, I definitely recommend for companies to build some rigor before they try to build out their analytics and track all their data. Um, make sure that you take good care of your data because it is really valuable. I mean, our company mission is to help companies of all sizes realize that their customer data is their most valuable asset. 
And the problem is, is most companies store that data in the worst possible ways for it to be reused in the future. So really, if you take some time and learn how to do proper taxonomy, um, you can have a lot of success. And even if you went to, if you Googled uh, how to build taxonomy uh, and just write MAGA after it, you'll get webinars and blog posts from us that will talk about how do you correctly structure it? Because if you don't, the artificial intelligence is not going to work. The machine learning is not going to work. Garbage in is garbage out. And when you add automation to garbage, it exponentially makes the problem worse. And I suspect that most people listening, no matter where it is that they're working and what department they're in, they're not going to have the luxury of an Amazon-like budget at their disposable at their disposal. So can you share any tips on how to leverage Amazon-like automation and personalized strategies, but, but without that, that big budget? Yeah. And uh, that's really going back to um, if you if you build out your taxonomy correctly and you integrate those tools correctly, you can really create a lot of amazing outcomes just between your marketing automation tool and your CRM, right? Being able to map the fields between those two tools does not cost any additional money, but can give you a lot of insight. And the biggest thing that we always try to help companies focus on is if you get good at Google Tag Manager, um, and your marketing automation tool. You can now use any single thing somebody does on your website in email communication. You can personalize any single email you send to them based upon their last interaction with your website, the last product that they've viewed. And you can now send them emails just like Amazon would that now has a product picture in it, has a product name in it, it has a product description, um, all just because they visited a web page and you know their email. And if you set up your marketing automation tool to track those types of things and you store the variables from the page, right? The uh, product name, product description, description, product image, and then you use merge variables in your marketing automation tool, which if you don't know how to use a merge variable by this point in marketing automation, right, really do that research. That's a superpower you can have. You can now send, hey, you forgot about this product without them ever having to add it to their cart, right? Pick up where you left off um, is a huge superpower. And you can do that by just configuring Google Tag Manager with your marketing automation tool. You can use a developer on Upwork for uh, 50 bucks, 200 bucks to write this small bit of code. Um, and you can really do some massively powerful things to get people back into the funnel. And that, that type of personalization of, Hey, they visited this page. We track this item. Our marketing automation tool knows it. And if they haven't visited the site in three days, send them an email that has those attributes in it. I mean, that's even more powerful than what Amazon does most of the time. And I'm curious, as a marketing technology and market analytics agency, from all the people that you're talking to, because you you work with clients all over the world, are there any trends in the kind of things that people are coming to you and, and asking for your help with? I would imagine there is after 12 months of disruption. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, naturally, everybody's focused on digital transformation and really taking advantage of the internet. Um, retail, for sure, has changed and it's they're trying to get more access. And everybody's trying to figure out how to how do I store my customer data? How do I get more access to my first party data? Um, with GDPR and with all the things that iPhone is doing with, hey, you can't have access to this stuff. Everybody's trying to store as much data as they can um, and get it into their data warehouse compared to being dependent on Facebook and stuff. So there's definitely a big shift to people trying to uh, become data hoarders. And the thing that I would just say is like the big fundamental thing that we're trying to push on everybody, and we're seeing a lot of tools come out in the marketplace now, is it's really a lot of focus around data governance. Um, how do I get clean data? How do I store accurate data? How do I get as much data as I can in a, in a structured way so it can be used for things like personalization, for targeting, uh, for automation? Um, so really, uh, everybody's hyper-focused on how do I get access to data? How do I store it really, really well? How do I protect myself if Facebook doesn't do this or Twitter does that or the iPhone is not allowing this? Um, so the big focus is on data capture uh, and data governance. Um, and that's our, our product, utm.io, um, the whole point of that product is allowing uh, a data analyst to set data governance rules. So that way the marketers, three layers downstream, can create accurate campaign tracking. Because if it's not accurately tracked, by the time it gets to the analyst, it's 10x more work, right? So data governance is a big, big, big push right now. And what is it you guys are, what's your primary focus this year? Is there anything that you're working on that you can share with us? And, and equally, the road ahead and what that looks like. 
The biggest, the biggest thing that we're focused on, of course, is uh, customer data platforms. That's a huge, huge portion of what companies are trying to get set up for uh, and trying to leverage a customer data platform. And a lot of our focus is really on business intelligence work, selling more and more business intelligence projects uh, and getting involved with that. Um, from, from like a marketing perspective and the things that we always focus on, we're always trying to focus on uh, more great content, more educational stuff. And I think for us, what we do as a living, right? It, nobody offers this in school. Nobody gives you this in college. Um, so we put out more and more content all the time. I mean, I have an online course. I have a book. Um, we try to put out webinars all the time to just try to help other marketers because there's not a lot of places to find this type of content or this type of education anywhere else. So between those two things, more education around CDPs and business intelligence and uh, trying to help others out there is a big focus for us. And finally, someone that's had the privilege to advise governments, universities, and private corporations on how to build entrepreneur ecosystems. If we have anyone listening, is there any advice or any success stories or anything that you can leave the uh, leave the listeners uh, with today? Yeah, focus on the long term. Um, I think many people are too short sighted. Uh, definitely think about your long term, big, hairy, audacious goal. Uh, work backwards from that and don't plan out the next five years. Uh, in, in our business, we've been very lucky in all of our businesses to be very successful. Um, we know our 20-year goal. I mean, we want to be a billion-dollar consulting firm, right? That's a 20-year goal, though, right? We've got a lot of time until we get there. Other than that plan, we have the next 12 months kind of outlined, um, And but things change so rapidly. I don't have a five-year plan. I don't have a 10-year plan. Like Things are going to adapt. So uh, do what Jeff Bezos did and and focus on that long 20-year plan. And um, you're going to be a lot more successful if you come up with that big, hairy, audacious goal than trying to be Zuckerberg and be a billion-dollar company in nine years. Um, not everybody's going to be a fluke. It's just not going to work that way. Inspiring words to finish on there. I love that. But before I do let you go, if anyone wants to find out a little bit more information about the kind of work that you're doing, keep up to speed with the developments there, what's the best way of finding you online? Yeah, so definitely you can check out our site, maga.io. So there's no R in my last name. You can definitely check it out and go to the footer of the website. There's going to be a downloads and resources section. Check that out. It's full of amazing learnings for you. Really, really good. But if you want to keep track of me, um, I'm most active on LinkedIn. So just go to LinkedIn, look for Dan Maga, and you'll find me on there. Hit me up with a connection request. Would love to get in contact and be able to stay connected through there. And I think now more than ever, digital marketers in particular are all chasing that that dream of trying to gain visibility into their customer's journey and retain them longer with integrated marketing technology and clean an- analytics, et cetera. And I know that's something that you guys are, are focusing so heavily on now, especially converting more customers with marketing technology. Such a fascinating subject. And I appreciate we've only even scratched the surface in our 20, 25 minutes together today. So I'd love to get you back on later in the year see how trends are evolving but more than anything just thanks for joining me today thanks so much for having me i hope everybody had as fun as i did i think in the gold rush to unlock hidden insights in their company data by leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning many businesses forget that if your data is not clean you're going to end up with garbage in, garbage out. So a big thank you to Dan for coming on and sharing how to leverage Amazon-like automation and personalization strategies, even if you don't have an Amazon-like budget. But now's the time where I put the microphone over to you. If you've got any questions, if you want a clubhouse invite, you want to help me build the merchandise store, which I talked about in a couple of episodes ago, or you want to share your insights around what you heard today, Whatever it is, please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, social channels at Neil C. Hughes, and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. But more than anything, I just want to give a genuine thank you for joining me today, giving up a bit of your time and listening to this show. So thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.